Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming for our talk. Uh, we are today presenting our project, we, which we were working on with uh, CZNIC. Uh, and it's called Ludus, and it's an advanced tool for your routers to like, better like, make your, your routers more secure. My name is Andrzej Lukasz, and I'm a student and researcher in the Center of Artificial Intelligence in Fell Technical Fell, uh, of Czech Technical University. And I'm Kalin Ivanov, and uh, I've also been working at Stratosphere and uh, also a student at CTU. All right, so uh, let's get to the plan. Uh, first of all, we will be talking about why Ludus, what is, the, what is the reason we've started this project. Then I'll talk a little bit about how you can model the interaction between the defender and the attacker as a game, and why is it beneficial for us. Later on, uh, I will briefly mention what is the benefit of joining forces with other people and how that can help you. Um, at the end, Colin will talk about uh, a metric we designed to estimate the quality of our strategies and also the level of security of individual devices. And finally, we will show you our tool, which is ready for uh, Tourisomnia. Raise your hand, please. Who, who here uh, uses or, or owns Tourist Rotor? Come on, don't be shy. Wow, thank you. So it's for you, so you can, after the talk, you can go start using it. So, oh, sorry. So first of all, what is the motivation? Why we started Ludus? So it, it started as a collaboration between the university and CZNIC, and it has been supported and funded by Technological Agency of Czech Republic. And the basic idea is that CZNIC was starting to create these awesome routers, and we wanted to be part of that. And we said, okay, maybe we can provide some different strategy for, for the devices that all the users can, can benefit from. And since we are part of the AI center, we uh, were thinking about using a game theory, which is a toolbox which can uh, help us solve uh, games. So if we can model the interaction as a game, there is a great uh, set of tools we can use to find the optimal strategies and, and use those in the interaction. So it's important to say that we only focus on uh, interaction coming from outside. We never inspect what is going in your local network or something going out. So we are uh, focusing on the attacks from outside. And the main tool we try to use are honeypots. Uh, CZNIC has some honeypots in, in Tourist and uh, in the uh, Omnia, but we want to uh, sort of take, we, we wanted to take it to another level. So uh, we want to use them in a smarter way. I'll explain that later. And last not, but not least, we wanted to estimate how, how the strategy is working, how good it is. Is it better than what uh, CZNIC was doing before or, or worse? what is the status of, of, the, of the devices. So that's why uh, we came up with the, with the metrics that we will also show you. Um, oh, this is really not working for me. So we were focusing on some troubles with honeypots. First of, the, first of all, uh, I want to ask you again, who of you uses some kind of honeypot in, the, in your network, in your devices? Anybody? Oh. That's not as much as I was ex would expect it, but maybe that, that, will, that will change after today. So the, the first trouble with Honeypot is, okay, where, where should I deploy the technology? Like, where should I put it? Uh, so this is something that people are struggling with because sometimes the technology is designed for sp a specific service or specific port, but we wanted to make it a little bit more attractive. Uh, the second thing is that once people deploy Honeypots, they usually use it, but they don't move it around. They, don't, they collect the data and maybe analyze it, but that, that's pretty much it. And th this brings us to the third point, which is, okay, I have the honeypot, which collects some, some data for me, and what is the next step? How do, I, how do I analyze the data? Do I have time for that? Do I have the, the knowledge for that? So we wanted to kind of take the data and prepare it for the users, so the users could see what is going on in their devices and in uh, all the devices using Glutus. And the last point is that you sh sometimes people are afraid of uh, deploying honeypots because they, they feel that, okay, if I have some real services running in my, uh, in my device and I deploy honeypots, this will bring more attention, more attacks to my real services, so I won't do it. So if we tried to test it, you can see that this is uh, a comparison of two devices. One of them was running, uh, both of them was, was running one, uh, one ser real service. And the blue one didn't have uh, any honeypots. The red one had uh, uh, three honeypots. 
You can see that there is a slight difference, a small difference, but this is like the, it's not as big as we would expect it. And for us, this is a reasonable price to pay for the information and visibility we will gain from uh, from the honeypots. You may be wondering what happened in here. Why, why one of them stopped working? Uh, it's pretty easy. I went for a vac vacation, and our cleaning lady unplugged the, the device, so that's why <laughs> that's why there's uh, some missing data. Um, so we won't be focusing on the last point, but we will. Uh, we, with Ludus, we try to we try to solve the th first three. So again, let's move it a bit. Sorry about that. Let's play a game. Uh, why? Why? What is the? What is the? reason we are, we are using the game uh, theoretical approach. So as I mentioned before, we want to um, model the interaction between the attacker and the defenders as a game. We want to uh, win this game, which uh, means in the model to minimize the, the utility of the attacker, the gain that the attacker gets from, from attacking the devices. Uh, for that, we need uh, something ideally optimal strategy or something very close to the optimal strategy. And while doing that, we kind of need to save some resources because uh, even though the, the routers are amazing and quite powerful, we cannot like use all the resources for our honeypots and stop uh, may make the devices to stop uh, doing other other things that you as a user expect them to do. So uh, the simple thing about uh, how this works is that we have some attacker attacking a service, and we want to add a honeypot. So and the idea is that we want to kind of move the attacks that go into the real service and shift them towards the honeypot. So for the attacker, we want them to be something like this, right? So we want them, the attacker to make it harder for them to distinguish which is the real service and which is the honeypot and place them in such way. So they would have to be more conservative when, uh, when choosing the target of the attack. Now, this is very simple example for one device, but what, what, are, what if we have more devices, meaning that there is a plenty of people that uses uh, tourists, so what, can, what, what if all of us who use tourists uh, can join forces with others, and is it, is it somehow beneficial for us? So again, you're going to see the attacker's perspective, that is bad. So in here, we have a very, very simplified example. We have two devices. Defender number one, defender number two, and each of them has a one uh, running service. Defender number one has a, uh, some service running at port 22. Guess what it is? And the second, uh, second defender has probably a web page, but it, obviously it can be something else. And each of them has an option to uh, open one honeypot. And in this simplified scenario, each of them has to choose between two ports. Now, down there in the slide, you can see what, what is the attacker perspective. So if, if the attacker comes, sees two random devices, this is what, what they see. Now, what is the optimal strategy now? What should each of them do to be better off in, in this, in this uh, game? So as you can see, if defender number one opens honeypot in port 80 and defender number two opens honeypot in 22, the attacker's perspective changes and makes it uh, Basically, it lowers the probability of hitting a real service and attacking this red box, which we call an information set. And it is something, it's a part of the game where the attacker cannot distinguish uh, between, uh, you, you have a certain amount of nodes in the game, and the attacker cannot distinguish in which of those uh, he or she is at the moment. So in that, in that case, uh, the attacker has to choose a very conservative strategy, which is sa safer for him, and that usually brings uh, less utility, which is a gain that uh, the attacker gets. Now, obviously, in real life, there's more people running it, and there is more ports than just three. So you can quite imagine that the, the problem scales a bit. And actually, it's uh, so big that we decided to pre-compute the strategies in our server and just deploy them to the routers because it, the computation is, is so, so demanding that the routers would not make it. And also, uh, this brings um, kind of disadvantage for us because we have to make the strategy in advance and then give it to the users, and then it's kind of harder to react if there are some changes. So that's why, as we show later on, we, will, uh, we created some... Uh, feedback loop so we can improve the strategy as it goes. Um, so this is a very basic uh, basic introduction to the uh, game theoretical approach of the problem. And now we will move to uh, 
the external measurement, and I will pass the, pass the word to my f uh, colleague in here, so he will talk about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, as Andra mentioned, I'll talk about how we actually make sure that our model works and that the game theoretical approach of uh, choosing where to place the honeypots actually has the effect of increasing the security in the routers. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about what data we use, uh, what data we collect from all the Ludus users, and based on this data, we form our security analysis. So there are two main types. Uh, one is the packet metadata. This is uh, number of packets, number of bytes, the source IP addresses that initiated the connections, the uh, ports, um, what is the status of the ports, like are they honeypot, are they production ports, and so on. And the other uh, type of data is uh, from Suricata Intrusion Detection System. It uh, generates some alerts that we use to classify all the network flows. And some examples you can see on the um, bottom left there, like uh, denial of service or unknown traffic or information leak. So it is just a classification of the uh, alerts. Um, uh, also, this data is um, completely anonymized, which means that the in the routers, the Ludus um, creates creates a instance hash for each router for us to be able to temporarily identify the routers and tie all the network flows to that router. However, this instance hash is regenerated each time the router is restarted, and users can also change it at their will. Um, the purpose for this is so that it maintains users' privacy. We do not want to tie all those network flows, all that data, to specific devices. Um, so all this data is anonymized, and also uh, we only look at the metadata, as I said. We don't actually look into the uh, packets themselves. Um, and there are two places that users will be able to see all this data. One is the local dashboard, which is available, uh, which is just running on each uh, person's um, tourist router. And the other place is on a publicly available uh, uh, Kibana dashboard. Kibana is part of the Elastic Search stack, if you know it. Um, and there, people can actually see uh, not only their data, but everyone else's data that is aggregated. Um, and again, it is Sorry. anonymized, so you cannot actually um, connect individual network flows to individual routers. Um, so here, I will show both of those views um, right now. Um, oh, so, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is this is the local dashboard uh, running on each person's tourist router if you install Ludus. As you can see, there's some basic information like total number of attackers or system uptime, um, and you know a nice nice visual uh, representation of where uh, all the attacks are coming from. So. Again, all these uh, IP addresses that we uh, collect are the sources of the attacks. So they're external IP addresses that connect to the uh, tourist router. So we do not collect anything in the local network, only external connections that are initiated externally. And that's what you see here, like country of origin, you know, Netherlands, Russia, all this is an example of that. Um, here's some of the alerts that uh, Suricata uh, generates. It has four severity levels based on how uh, severe the um, uh, Suricata determines that the network flow is. Uh, and some more in detail data on each alert. Um, so exactly what happened, like at which time, you know, this was a few minutes ago, um, what IP and so on. And this data you can actually download. You can download the raw data. Um, I believe it's uh, for every 24 hours. So you, you can, um, you can after 24 hours, you can uh, download all the data for that uh, if you want. Um, and now I will talk about... Sorry, before you move on, yeah. it's important to say that this particular router is in my house. So if you think at this time, oh, well, this doesn't apply to me, I'm not being targeted. Well, this is my home network. So you can see that some of the attacks probably are not that severe, but Anyway, it shows that there is some uh, 
activity going towards my home network, right? So this is probably what you would see in your own your own router. Yes, yeah, that's one of the things we saw is that, yeah, we're getting attacked everywhere, everyone. It doesn't matter if you are a router in the university at home or uh, whatever. Um, so now I will talk about the uh, public dashboard. So this is uh, a report that is, we are generating these uh, PDF reports every 24 hours. Uh, this is from October 24th, so uh, a few weeks ago or a couple of weeks ago. Um, and this just tells us, uh, this gives us again an overview of all the routers. We had at that time 12 routers on our network. Um, if we, we are also, um, based on all this data, we're forming uh, security metrics. So that's what you can see on the top right, the most, uh, the top right uh, um, graph, which is the risk. And based on this uh, risk, which is in time, we can uh, analyze certain peaks, what is happening if, if um, at a certain time there is some kind of weird behavior and uh, for example, you know this in your own router, something, uh, an abnormal huge amount of alerted flows, you can compare to this risk and see if um, it is happening throughout all the uh, Ludus, router, uh, Ludus routers. Um, <clears throat> some other uh, data that we connect are um, uh, like the IP addresses, we, you know, again, we um, find this, the, uh, what countries they're from, what um, ports they attacked, and so on. And all of this is available for the public, and the public can download this data as well. These reports can be downloaded. Um, so let me continue here. Yep. Um, and talk a little bit about, a little bit more in detail about the metrics. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, the overall security uh, metric is kind of our starting point. We start our analysis from there, and then uh, use other metrics to, to gain a more specific insight on what is uh, happening. For example, uh, the honeypot to production port ratio, uh, and that's the uh, graphs that you see on the bottom, um, is very important for us because that's what the game theoretical model is optimizing for. We're trying to um, increase the amount of time that attackers spend in honeypots and minimize the time that they spent in the production ports. So that's what we see there. Um, also, we have different ones like entropy of attack or proportion of attacks and uh, other metrics as well. Uh, and you can check those out at the public dashboard as well. Um, so I will just go through an example of what our data analysis kind of looks like, what we actually do with the data and how we determine if, you know, if we can identify attacks or what we can do from all this data. So, <clears throat> This is um, an example from October 27th, I think was the data, or 25th. Um, and first we identify all the peaks in the risk, as I said before. Um, and we look into each individual one of those uh, peaks. It ended up that in that particular day, all of them, all of those peaks were generated from the same attacker. And that is what this is showing here. Uh, we identify these four IP addresses that you can see. They're all uh, in Korea. <laughs> uh, and these um, four IP addresses were attacking uh, port 22 and 23, so SSH and Telnet. And we were uh, generating some alerts that you see uh, in the chart to the left, uh, mostly in uh, port 22. Um, and then we filtered by those, uh, you know, by those IP addresses, we can filter by them. Uh, and see the data in time. And we noticed an interesting behavior that there was uh, kind of what we call the recon and execution phase. In the recon phase, there were very few network flows and these IP addresses were only kind of uh, generating very little alerts uh, and very little flows. And that was in the beginning of October. And in the end of October, uh, 23rd, 25th, 27th um, of October, there was a huge spike in the uh, amount of flows that they were generating, and that's what those peaks that you saw earlier were. Um, <clears throat> so we were interested, like, if this is only in our network, because they were attacking six of our 12 routers, so we were interested if other places were getting it as well. And we went on show then, we saw, we typed in those IP addresses, and we saw that they were get, generating these alerts here 
uh, system administrator is connecting from the given IP address reject, re reject the connection request. So they were probably uh, brute forcing some uh, SSH uh, or uh, Telnet and they were getting rejected. So um, yeah, and, and these were from all over the world. So not just uh, because we assume that our routers are probably just in the Czech Republic, but this is from all over the world. So uh, yeah, we can identify attacks. We can, uh, we can uh, see what is the state of security uh, across the whole Ludus network and beyond. Uh, and make these kinds of inferences. Uh, and anyone can, uh, who, who wants to uh, you know, use this data, can, can use it and make their own analyses. Um, <clears throat> and now we will talk a little bit about the uh, Ludus tool and how we can um, uh, you know, download it and how we can use it. Okay, so the tool is ready for you if you are using uh, tourist routers. We are working on making it available for any open VRT device, but it's, it will take some time. We, are, we hope that by the end of the year we will finish that. Now, at, if you recall at the beginning, there were three points I wanted to address. We, we, that, that, that was something we, we started with when, when doing Ludus. So first of them was that the management of the honeypot is kind of something that the users don't want to do it on its own. So for, because of that, Ludus is fully automated, which means that it analyzes, the, it finds the production ports in your device and uses this uh, to get from the game theory model the uh, set of honeypots it should, uh, it should uh, use. Now, if you later on start a new service, the system will, will find this out and uh, adapt the strategy to that. And also, if there is a new strategy, because we analyze uh, the data that, that we collect and we find out, okay, maybe the model is not as accurate as we think, we can generate a new strategy and again, the, the tool will recognize this and get the updated strategies on its own. Uh, as Colin mentioned, we uh, focus on maintaining the privacy of the users, so all the data that we are collecting is anonymized and also uh, aggregated together. So from the public uh, dashboard, you cannot really tie the s single uh, data points back to the, back to the devices. Uh, if, as I was saying, if you own a tourist router, you can go and uh, try it right now. If you are not, you can still uh, help us with that. There is a uh, GitHub link. So if you are interested in this, you want to uh, help us to make this work in other uh, systems, please um, contact us. We will be super happy if someone manages to do that and helps us with it. Um, so this is it. Uh, we encourage you to uh, go check the visualizations, uh, try it on in, in your routers. And if you have any questions, we will be happy to answer that. Thank you very much. Mirek Svoboda, thank you for a great presentation. A question, what will happen with this project once you finish your studies? Is it, uh, like, uh, is, is it uh, going to be handed over to CZNIC or who is going to, to manage it to run the infrastructure and, and maintain the, the, the client and the backend? So uh, this is uh, from our side because it's a joint project, uh, we, uh, we will support this project when we finish because I, I hope I will be still working there uh, as a researcher. Uh, but yeah, uh, we are part of the bigger group in AIC which focuses on cybersecurity, so, so the, the support from the university will uh, continue. Uh, the same, I hope, applies to CZNIC. Uh, later on there is, a, there is a lecture on what is new in tourist world, so I, I encourage you to ask there as well. But I hope they will they will continue helping us with with the, the updates and development uh, of this as they as they were doing in in the previous years. So I hope it will it will continue. Uh, it's not if, like tied to to our studies. Uh, it's project of the of the lab which will be there even if we finish the studies. So the support will continue. Thank you. And uh, one more question, please. Is the whole project open source? Yeah. Thank you. Tak, díky, díky za, <coughs> za otázku, za odpovědi. Thank you for your presentation. And I will ask the other okay. uh, presenter. Thanks a lot. Thank you again.